Uh. Oh, crap. Just got a work text that I probably have to deal with. I don't want to do that. And the first pitch is a ball outside. Is that our first pitch? All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are live here, low 61. We are uh, live here at the 10 a.m. game, Colorado Jack Rabbits versus the Catalyst Cardinals. Through the coin flip, the baseball gods have given the Jack Rabbits the home Ball away, 64. Gianni not hitting that outside corner. Uh, looks like we have a different ump, so the field ump from the 8 a.m. game is now behind the plate, and the behind the plate ump is now in the field. And a ground ball off to the right. The field ump uh, the, of this game was the behind the plate ump, and he was given that outside pitch, so Gianni started fishing around there. Those were not plentiful fishing grounds, so now it's three balls and one strike to the Cardinals. Strike two on the outside corner. It took a little off that one, 58 maybe. Might have had a curve on it. And behind us, we have some grown men doing a home run softball derby. That ball is high, and that will be, will be the first, uh, first batter gets on. So Jack Rabbits uh, with an exciting come from behind victory at the 8 a.m. game. As someone texted me, that was play to win baseball. And uh, Jack Rabbits kind of turning it on there at the end. We have played the Catalyst Cardinals before. I believe we have defeated them in one of our tournaments where we didn't get to finish the, <laughs> the, the Sunday game. But any given weekend, different teams can be uh, different, uh, and that curveball goes outside. Isai with a throw down that gets all the way into center field. We don't like to see that. So runner on second now with one ball to number 30 for Catalyst. I got halfway through my first burrito for a little bit of a break here. Oh, 
Oh, Gianni with a 66 riser. That ball was coming up. It actually made the ump jump a little bit because he wasn't totally sure that Isai had a glove on it, but he didn't. Isai was sure-handed. Catch on strike one there. Runner at second, taking a huge lead. Ball skips through, and the runner will easily take third. He had a huge jump. Jackrabbit's pitcher is having a hard time holding anybody on. Um, one of our flaws right now, working on trying to throw strikes, not paying attention to the batter, or sorry, the runner. Um, only Jack seems to do that well. As such now, Gianni really in the hole, three balls and one strike with the runner on third. That ball was called strike two. Pitcher was ready, or sorry, batter was ready to, uh, to go to first. And Gianni now with this comes set. And that ball is popped foul onto the softball home run derby challenge. It'd be nice to have someone over there because uh, it's a tough to go to retrieve those balls when they end up on the field. Now they've got people over there throwing them back to us. So a 3-2 count now. No down, runner on third. Not where Gianni wanted to start this game. And that ball floats in high on ball four again. So two batters taken to full count, both of which he's lost on a floater ball four. And a high quality at bat for both of the Catalyst uh, players. So we'll now see what Gianni can do here with his back against the wall. And runners on first and third. Runner goes nowhere. That ball is... 59 and high. Gianni looking like he's trying to put a lot of spin on pitches, and they're just not breaking. I mean, that's just what I'm looking at here. I can see that the ball has a little bit of a red dot on it, which you get from a, a breaking ball, but they're just not doing anything. There's a 63 riser. Wonder how long before coach comes out and has a chat with him. Because Gianni has to has to be our guy. He has to go three scoreless innings, preferably, for us to make sure we get that 2-0 start. So, so Isai, wondering the same question, doesn't see anything from Coach. Isai asserting that leadership role that he definitely plays on this team. To tell Gianni, hey man, let, let's go throw some strikes. This, isn't, this is not a good place to be. So let's see what, uh, how Gianni responds to Isai's charge. So Jackrabbits will trade a run for an out here on a ground ball of the infield. And that'll be ball four on four straight pitches. So four, three base on balls and uh, Catalyst has the, has the bases loaded. On the offense, uh, defensive side, we have, as mentioned, Eastside behind the plate and Gianni on the mound. Jack at first, sorry, Joe at first. Chris at second, Ricardo at short, and Jorge at third. In left is Javon, in center is Jack, and in right is, is that Isai or Kieran? Who's in right? What? Not Kieran? It's tall though, it must be, Is it must be Isaiah then. It must, be, it must be Isaiah. And we have the corners in, even with the bag, and then we have the middle infielders back for double play depth. So let's see what we get here. We get Eugene clapping for his son here behind me, in case you heard that. Swing and a miss at a 65 mile an hour pitch. I'm not sure what Coach Hunter told Gianni, but that was a beautiful fastball right there at the letters, lots of speed. Foul ball straight back on a 66 mile an hour pitch. Really throwing that ball hard. Love it. Foul ball. Good swing by number 27. Keep alive there. That's probably a strike. Not much he could do with it, but fouling away. Good quality at bat here, merging for number 27. So Gianni has not had any break on his breaking ball, just throwing BBs at this point. 
That one shows up a 69 on the gun, but I think that was might have been some of the exit velocity there. And number 27 swinging a Marucci here. All the Catalyst Cardinals with step off the base and a ground ball right to second base. Through, right through Ricardo's legs. That will go all the way to the fence. That will clear the bases. It may end up being a home run. So we'll see, but three runs in on the air and Ricardo didn't know where to throw it. So he just runs it in. So pretty, pretty brutal error there on what was a tailor-made ground, ground ball for a double play. Okay, we got to shake it off. But that is not the type of defense that the Jackrabbits have played uh, so far this year where they've been quite successful. Jackrabbits with a nine and uh, five record. A couple of weekend tournaments, well, winded out, uh, blown out, I guess, uh, the tournament was. That was 61. Um, and then rained out. This weekend looking lovely. In fact, I'm kind of lamenting that I don't have a little bit of sunscreen on my arm. We've got about 70 degrees here at first pitch. And same forecast all, uh, all weekend. So yeah, I got 71 right now, which I believe is warmer than Las Vegas, Neener Neener, and uh, potentially even Phoenix. So they, the so Southwest uh, community is getting cooler weather this weekend and your Mile High City just being the absolute best place to be. So one ball, two strikes now. Oh, that was a beautiful 60 mile an hour curveball. There's not much that number 82 could do with that. And Gianni, tip of the hat, strikeout. First out of the inning, a lot of damage done already, but getting one down is a big deal. Not sure if the Jackrabbits are willing to trade that fourth run for another out, but it appears that way as the infield is all the way back. Number four steps in for the Cardinals. Oh, 61. And that's probably the reason why Esai starts a catcher every day or every game is that he knew that curveball was coming and he got down and blocked it. The rest of our catching cores had trouble with that. Esai keeping that ball in front of him, therefore saving a run. Swing and a miss, 66. Number four here is going to have to decide a little bit sooner to swing. How fast uh, Gianni's throwing. That's another 66 right there down the middle. And Gianni has 10 innings. Well, that was the end of the home run derby, I guess. That's awkward if that's going to be happening. Uh, Gianni has 10 innings over eight games. 23! There it is. Another 60. That one hit 69 on the gun, and I believe it. That one came in hard. Um, Gianni is, prior to this game, had faced 51 batters. And here's the, here's the stat that's amazing. Um, of those 51 batters, he'd struck out 24. So, much like this inning, a um, lot of lot of Gianni's 69 on the outside corner. I'm not sure what 57's possibly expected to do with that. That ball's in the dirt, and it's, nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. So the unfortunate part is for. Uh, Gianni, he's had a couple of bad outings, so his ERA is 4.74. He hit 69 on one of them and 66 consistently. I mean, he is making this thing pop. So Gianni from the windups to provide even more power. Let's see where that ball is. 66 and low. So we, we talked about in last game, Teddy had a whip of 1.2, uh, which is walks in and hits per innings pitch. Gianni with a very respectable 1.8. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Runner on third. So certainly Gianni in the mix for ace on the team. Swing and a miss for strike three. So after an initial 
three batters where he couldn't find the strike zone. Gianni comes back and strikes out his three outs for the inning, but not before a very costly error at short uh, that allowed all those free base on balls to score. Jack Rabbits will now go into the bottom of the first down three runs already, so going to have to put up a really crooked number to win the inning. Uh, this will surprise exactly none of you who have ever turned into a game. Uh, the, hor the lineup is Joe, Jorge, Gianni, Teddy, Chris, Aaron, and Javon, if we get all seven of those guys up. And we are, of course, batting um, uh, all of our players today. We'll talk a little bit about tomorrow and the rules for batting 9, 10, or everybody. One of the things that Coach uh, suggested was that if everybody's having a uh, quality of bat <laughs> Keith to the rescue. He's no Sarah, but he's, he's in the running. Uh, Keith bringing me the uh, sunscreen is, uh, so I don't burn my arm here. And the, uh, I'd love to know, I've got a, <clears throat> got a mic on my first base camera without the wind muff, um, which normally dampens the sound. I'd love to know if folks are picking up uh, game sounds, uh, you know, from everybody between innings when I'm not talking. I'm trying to figure out how to make that work because I think that'll add something. You also know that the stream is up and active even if I'm not talking. Believe it or not, it is uh, tough for me to talk two hours nonstop. I do need the occasional break. All right, I'm going to try to track down somebody who has a link to the USSA tournament bracket so we can find out um, who else is in our 13U AA division and also um, what, what our tomorrow would look like depending on the outcome of this game. With a big come from behind victory over the Rough Riders at the 8 o'clock game, Jackrabbits currently control their own destiny. Um, obviously, the top of the first with Catalyst uh, scoring three means the Catalysts have different plans for their Sunday uh, than maybe we would uh, have for ours. So, Joe will step in. Let's go, Joe. Get her started, bud. And Joe giving the fist bump to the ump and to the catcher. You missed it, but he just checked in with the man above to make sure he's with him. And Joe had a very good uh, two-hit game at 8 a.m. He's had trouble finding and, and uh, tracking the ball a little bit er in this early part of the season with an uncanny amount of strikeouts. Uh, hopefully, the 8 a.m. game was more than enough to get him back on track to seeing the ball and driving the ball. So Joe showing bunt again. Everybody crashing, including the second baseman. Um, so if Joe were to bunt, and it's unlikely that he is, but if he were to bunt, uh, there'd be no one covering first as the second baseman was also crashing. So uh, let's see if he does. There's a strike right at the knees. Oh, now second baseman being good coaching by the catalyst. They uh, reminded the second baseman that he needed to be covering first. And so made a break there. So well done. Good, good recovery by the coaching to see that and fix that. That ball is outside. So Joe seeing a lot of pitches here as the leadoff batter is supposed to do. 3-1. Funny story, uh, Teddy hit a base clearing uh, double in the 8 a.m. game. And he told me he didn't necessarily need to bat leadoff anymore. He kind of likes that uh, position. So Joe is secure at the top of the order as Teddy is no longer pressing for it. That was a 57 mile an hour paint that, uh, pitch that painted the outside corner really well placed by 36. We take a full count now. Ooh, foul ball. Umpire took that foul ball off his face. He's going to need to readjust. And he's taking it. Uh, he's giving the thumbs up. We had uh, Joe go down and talk to Hunter. So we give him a little time to, to shake that off. And he's good. C catcher checks in. Um, triple check that he's good. You hate, you hate to see anybody taking anything off the mask. That's scary. That's why we have the protection. But it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. 
And that ball is corked in the center field, over the center fielder's head. That is one, two, three uh, bounces to the wall. Joe is gonna go to second, and he's gonna go to third. We are gonna have a play at third. Oh, there's an overthrow on the cutoff, man. There is no play at third. Joe in safely with a lead off triple. Lead off triple. We like to see that. You know, you give up three runs in the top, you gotta come back and make a statement, and Joe leading the charge to make a statement. So Jorge up now. Jorge with a pop-up to the right side. That looks like it's going to, fair ball, fair ball. Drops on the right field line. I apologize, I can't even see it from where I'm at. Jorge will take second on a stand-up double. I didn't even give a chance to tell you about Jorge's uh, 348 batting average. So Jackrabbit's two for two now. Gianni will step in. Gianni with a 500 batting average. 18 at bats, nine hits. On base percentage of 679 and on base plus slugging of 1.623. Those are all star kind of numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Gianni also has nine RBIs and he can pick up, get a double digit here if he picks up Jorge from second. That first pitch is a ball away, 55 miles an hour. Oh, sorry. Shoot. You were all staring at third base and there was nothing action over there. My bad. I was doing the stats and camera and. Oh, that ball, I should have left it down. That ball is way down the left field line. We got four or five bounces to the fence. Jorge jogging in, and we got him out at third, I think. Oh, he's in there safe. He's in there safe on a triple. He ran through what I believe was the stop side at second, and still ended up at third, so a triple. Wow, Teddy, Teddy very fooled by that pitch. Teddy batting 333 on the year. His uh, OPS is 862 uh, and a big difference in slugging. He is only batting or uh, hitting .38. So you can see Gianni hitting the, the big hits and Teddy hitting mostly singles. Teddy, however, is uh, uh, actually, yeah, he's got seven hits, six singles and a double. Uh, Teddy is leading the team, however, on 13 RBIs and a 10 run scored himself and uh, just a mere two strikeouts so he's going to put the ball in play uh question becomes is he safe at first or not swing and a miss run and and we'll see if we have a play and he's out double play at home Good tag by the catcher there for the double play. So strike out and then out at home. So Jack Rabbits with a poor at bat from Teddy that then ends up in a poor base running decision, run themselves really out of a rally. So uh, two runs in, but nobody on now. Three to two, hot hitting Aaron at the top, uh, at, uh, uh, at the plate. Batting 462. For those of you that missed the 8 a.m. game because it's really early, Aaron had the walk-off double to win the game and score two runs, mobbed by his teammates for his efforts. No good deed goes unpunished, am I right? And that ball is corked into right center. Look at it go. That is another ball to the fence. So looks like Aaron will motor into second base, no problem, with a stand-up double. So that. Uh, strikeout and then uh, running on the throw to first cost the Jackrabbits a run there. But uh, in steps Ricardo. Ricardo, who moved his uh, batting average above the Mendoza line in the last game, is batting 211. And runner on second, not much of a lead. Strike at 56 across the knees. Two down, right? Yeah, two down. Three, two count, and we've got Javon in the on-deck circle. Ricardo with the bat on his shoulder in the box. Now he's loaded, he's swinging the hype fire. 
but for how much longer, we don't know. Foul ball. Again, a lot of controversy around this bat that uh, many, many, many players are swinging. Uh, some discussion about whether it's juiced or not and traveling at, at speeds, ball coming off the bat at speeds in excess of what's allowed by rules. Big hole on the right side for Ricardo. And he hits the ball down the left field line. And the second, ba the third baseman is able to knock it down, but it knocks out of play. Ball goes out of play. Everybody will get one. The base they were headed to and one. So Aaron will tie the game with a coming in from second and Ricardo with a, I guess, is that a, probably a single with a, with an extra base on the, on the air. So that's it, that ties the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is a brand new game with Javon up. Javon hitting 273, but an on-base percentage of .556. So getting on more than half the time he's up to bat. And he pops that ball straight up back over towards the softball. And they're not gonna take a break from that softball competition because everybody's on the clock, but at some point they'll retrieve that ball for us. Um, and Javon steps in now with that second pitch coming to him, swinging the Marucci. Oh, bust. shot to the right. And we'll see, we got to, and we got to run through the stop sign, but he's down. And Javon stays at first with that single and the RBI. And there's that really crooked number we needed. He is not a fast runner. Well, but I mean, not paying it like he was jogging. Oh, he wasn't running all full speed. No. But we got we got two down for the Jackrabbits who continue to put the ball in play, which we love to see. Um, Catalyst pitcher, I think a little disheartened out there. His body posture a little down, and I don't blame him. He's putting the ball in and around the plate, and the ball's just not going uh, to his fielders. It's just hitting him where we're hitting him where they ain't. Swing and a miss with a pitch, and a oh wow, excellent throw by the catcher. Ooh, that was in that was in close. Uh, Javon calls timeout and gets himself up. So now we've got Chris in. No balls, one strike. Chris batting 333 on the year with seven singles. That's interesting. All of his hits have been singles. So let's see the next pitch. Ooh, foul ball. Straight back, 56 mile an hour pitch. So now Chris going to have to be smart here with no balls and two strikes. Number 30, continuing to throw in and around the plate so you can't take any pitch off. You gotta be ready to swing. Big hole on the right side as the second baseman is just holding Javon on. I haven't seen number 30 really make much of a motion towards second. They got a huge lead for Javon. Javon going, that ball's corked into left center field again and Javon will score. And we'll see if we get a play at second. And Nice double on a really well-struck ball from Chris. So Chris will pick up an RBI there, and that will add to his RBI total for the year. He'll put him up to five. Esai now. Esai now with a chance to uh, pick up an RBI. Two down again, remember the strikeout, throw him out that uh, Cardinals did was our two outs. Otherwise, everybody has put the bat on the ball and put the ball in play, hitting them where they aren't. That ball is low and away at 58. Looks like pitcher may be trying to overthrow there. Often an indicator on a fastball, uh, hard, but, but will bounce early because the release point changes when the arm goes slightly faster. And Esai with a shot to first base. First baseman with a great grab himself to end the inning. So that's what the uh, pitcher's been waiting on, uh, hitting the ball where they were. So with that, that ends the inning. Jackrabbits win the inning 5-3. But clearly we can see Catalyst can put run, runs across the board. So we got to play our defense. 30 minutes into this game, uh, we are uh, feeling, feeling pretty good. Um, Feeling good so far. If you're going to be impacted by what is almost certainly going to be a banning of the hype fire at some point in the future, baseballsavings.com is a good place to go. They will email you every day, sometimes twice a day, about all their great sales. 
But you can pick up some really great uh, bats over there. You, we pick up all of Teddy's pants there because they're only like 10 bucks and he outgrows them or rips a hole in the knee. They don't sponsor us, they should, but just, I know a lot of folks uh, looking for not spend their entire life savings on baseball gear and baseballsavings.com is a good place to go. Of course, your local Dick's Sporting Goods is a great place to go. Two in a pinch, no, no, no uh, concerns about them either, but baseballsavings.com really has some stellar deals on on bats now it's a clearance kind of type place so you you kind of get what they got there's there's not a lot of inventory and you got to move quickly to get it but it's not a, not a bad place to be Gianni whipping uh, through his warm-ups here now that Isai has put his equipment back on and will be taking uh, be his battery mate for the second inning That was a long inning, 30 minutes, yeah. So I'm, I'm hitting my lap button. Oh. The the inning, so I keep, keep track of each inning? Yeah. Look at that. Always innovating, always improving the product we provide for free to the entire internets. Uh, so Keith over here keeping track not only of the game time, but also innings. So the first inning took 29 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but Isai was throwing down, almost just took uh, Jorge's chin off because he didn't know where he was throwing it. All right, no more of that shenanigans. No one getting hurt. This is just a game. And we go to the top of the second. In steps the Catalyst Cardinals pit uh, batter, excuse me. Didn't pick up his number, but we'll see how Gianni goes to the first pitch. Curve ball, 61, cue balled off the end of it. So 42 is the batter, 42 to Jackie Robinson's number. Uh, was ready for that fastball and swung a little early and cue balled that off. Did make decent contact, however. Gianni waiting forever for the call. Here it is. Fastball, 66 right there at the knees. Here is. Uh, you who can hit Gianni when he's on. And you have seen a pop up straight to Gianni. And Gianni grabs it there at the edge of the screen. A one down. Again, nobody talked. It was Coach Hunter yelling Gianni, Gianni, Gianni. That way, Chris, who's playing second base, didn't run into him. You got Jabrell over at first, Chris at second. Ricardo at short and Jorge at third, Teddy in left. Jack, of course, anchoring center where he loves to be. And Isaiah, Isaiah in right, thank you. So that ball is elevated. So when Gianni is on, he can't be hit. It's been a consistency thing for him all season. Strike at the knees, nice pitch. That would look like a 63 at the knees. One ball, one strike. Sixty-seven in the eyes. So way to go, way to elevate. Bring the ball down, get the batter looking low, and then bring in the ball high to number thirteen. So Eastside checking in with Blue to see what the count was. I don't know if Eastside has been given the green lights to start calling pitches. Swing and a miss. Sixty-six. And he is out, and we throw it around, and we sometimes do okay throwing it around. Gianni reminding everybody where to throw it, so not quite as practiced as some of the other teams we've seen, like the Slammers on, on Wednesday. But we're getting there. The more we do it, the more we do it. So when Gianni's on, uh, Gianni is unhittable. When he's not, he's, you know, we saw him in the first inning. He can give up a bunch of runs on base on balls. Ooh. What? He hit 69. Uh, Isai took that one, I think, off the parts, maybe. He is really in a lot of pain, and now he's embarrassed. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, we're going to walk that off. Yeah, uh, his teammates taking uh, a knee, at least Jack taking a knee in solidarity. Everybody else having kind of a snicker at him. 
If I were Gianni, I wouldn't be snickering because Isai has ways to get back at him. That is, of course, why we wear the protective gear. Even with the protective gear, it can really hurt sometimes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, don't recommend rubbing any dirt on that one. Just uh, kind of walk that off. All right. Uh, Isai, not one to show a lot of emotion, but, but kind of red right now, uh, probably from exertion combined with some embarrassment there. Gianni better be offering a big I'm sorry. So, I'm sure when Isai woke up this morning, he did not say, I'm going to take a fastball. Uh, right there for ball one. Ooh, whoa, uh, I, 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 excellent move by the batter there. 64 mile an hour brush back pitch, I guess. I don't think Gianni wanted to do that, but nonetheless, that's what came in. Swing and a miss, 66 for number 44, it looks like. Hank Aaron's old number. Wow, were they, in addition to the, the fabulous uniforms for the Cardinals, the late 70s, early 80s, St. Louis Cardinals uniform throwback, I want to go check these numbers and see if we've got a bunch of famous ballplayers numbers. That would be, that'd be class. That would be top class. All right, so Gianni's struggling now to number 44, 3-1. Gianni has to bring a fastball right down Colfax to him. And he does not. He... Uh, he hit the left batter's box um, with that pitch. Oh, we got a request for a new ball because that one's got a rip in it. So we'll see if the tournament director is able to replace that one. Uh, you want to? You got to get get it to them, and then we'll get you a new one. It's got a rip in it. And Gianni find a rip in the ball, getting a new one. See if that was changing the way his ball was acting. 63. Uh, I don't know, maybe. I mean, pitchers are pitchers are particular, and a little rip could change the the angle or could change the feel of the ball. So we're gonna get a new new ball introduced to the mix right out of the tournament director's bag. But Gianni, in the meantime, is gonna bounce that pitch at 63. So the runner on first. Runner on first, not going anywhere. Jabril holding him on. Now he goes. Oh, nice pitch, nice pitch, nice throw, nice tag by Chris, but a good run by number 44 out there to steal the base. So now Catalyst with the tying, or no, not the tying run, we got 5-3, but with a run in scoring position. Swing and a miss at 63, and that should end the inning. That's three. We got, kind of got a little lost, so stolen base does no harm to the Jackrabbits, and we finish the top of the second, 5-3. Gianni with um, a strikeout to end the inning. That may be the end. He may go two, may go three. We'll see uh, if he's who's pitching after him. I think Chris is uh, tapped to be the relief this inning, so we'll see. These these innings uh, going a little bit. Uh, well, I guess we'll see if this inning goes faster or slower. Because that's only a half inning, wasn't it? We are nine minutes into that, so that half inning took just about ten minutes. Nine, nine minutes. Uh, Kieran, Isaiah, Jack, and Jabrell will certainly bat. Uh, I'm, I'm certain of it. Well, and then Jor, 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 Joe and Jorge uh, with Gianni, Teddy, and Chris all hopefully putting their helmets on in this bottom of the second. We'll see if there's a new pitcher or not.
All right. Kieran, who was 0 for 1 with a walk in the first game. And we got Jabrell in the dugout, pulling his teammates off the bench and getting them to chant for Kieran here as he steps in, takes the first pitch, and that ball outside in the left-handed batter's box. So Kieran uh, batting right at the Mendoza line with a 200 batting average early in the season here. But does, I think, lead the way, lead the team in uh, base on balls. So, um, no, take that back. He's second on the team in base on balls behind Gianni. Oh, there it was. That was nice. You like to see that. That was a good foul ball off to the right. As a leadoff hitter this inning, his main job is just to get on. Oh, which he fouls off to the left side here. And now he's in a 2-2 count. Tuesday, I think it was, we were working on the uh, two-strike approach and Kieran adopting it perfectly, choking up on his bat, spreading his legs out, taking ball three outside. So again, just batting with a catcher's eye, knowing where that zone is, knowing what, what's gonna happen or not happen. It appears the home run derby behind us might be done. Oh, swing and a miss at a 55 mile an hour pitch. Pain on the face of Kieran. All right, 44 will step in. Strike right there, 57 at the letters. Isaiah's gonna have to really take that bat off his shoulders. He got uh, barked at in the first game for letting three pitches go past he didn't take a swing at. Let's see if he can swing here. Swing, late swing, 58. So number 20 or 30, I can't see his number. Pitcher for Cardinals. Uh, in and around the zone and beating our guys in the bottom half of the second here. That ball is inside, nice. I, sure, I think that might have been purposely a payoff or a, a change up there, but it was inside. So he's number 30, pitcher's number 30 for the Cardinals. Ball's away. So 2-2 two -two now. Isaiah goes from being in trouble to being in the catbird seat here. As he should be looking fastball right down Colfax. And he is! Oh, and what a play by the first base! And wow! So we get a... Get an almost a catch from the pitcher there in a, just a reflexive move. I think mostly to save his life. Um, but a uh, well struck pitch by Isaiah then goes off the glove and towards their base. Isaiah with a nice big lead at first. Jack in. Jack showing bunt. And that ball is, is thrown in, but uh, not in time. Izzy's just too fast. One of the oldest on the team, if not the oldest on the team, just physically big, big strides. He will not be long for the 80-foot base pass. Next year, he will be on the 90-foot base pass and playing for his high school team, undoubtedly. Good stop by the catcher there. That ball gets past Isaiah's almost certainly on third. We got half the dugout up, half the dugout down. Nobody really shouting for Jack here. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh my goodness gracious! Jack with a one bounce to the fence. I mean, he has never hit the ball that hard before. And now we're gonna play a third! Now we're gonna play a third! Oh my goodness! For a man who has struggled this whole season, 
That is two big hits for him in two days. Your turn, number two. Yes. Your turn, number three.
Oh, I've been on mute for so long. How long have I been on mute for? Oh, no. Darn it. Ah, <laughs> oh, nuts. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Jorge on third and Gianni on first, and I've been on mute, I think, since the beginning of the inning. That will end the inning for number, it was number 30, uh, who pitched well. Our boys just hit it where they weren't, and as such, gave up eight runs. I believe all of them earned. And number 27 will take the mound for the Cardinals. He'll get quite a few warm up pitches here, I imagine, with Jorge on third and Gianni at first. So, again, sorry I was muted for the whole time. I was talking the whole time. I had important things to say. They all went. Into the ether will never be repeated again. Some of the best commentary ever. It's some of the best commentary ever. It probably would have won, won me an Emmy, I imagine. Is an Emmy what you win? I don't know what online. A YouTube? -y? And Jack Rabbit's leading RBI, RBI leader Teddy steps in with a chance to pick up a couple more RBIs. We got a runner on first and a runner on third. Big gap down the left field line if Teddy can really turn on it. We'll see that ball is in the dirt. Gianni takes second, unopposed. Teddy is gonna wanna feast on a fastball across the middle here, which is gonna get him to go chasing again like he did his first at bat. 56 right over the outside corner. So Teddy with 1K on the day. And then there was led to a drop third strike, which then had Gianni thrown at home in the first inning. And they did it right after I said he doesn't strike out very much, so I'm not going to talk about that. Instead, he gets a lot of singles. Foul ball straight back. Two strike approach, and he does have one ball and two strikes. And that ball is hit over the third baseman's glove. That's going to score one. And Teddy will take first safely there. So that puts runners on the corners with another run across for the Jackrabbits. Jackrabbits now with a plus six, nine to three. So Aaron, arguably the hottest of the batters, uh, Jackrabbits batters. First pitch, a ground ball. Somebody missed a sign. Oh wait, do we have two outs? Yeah, we have two outs, never mind. So Teddy was going on the pitch and Aaron swung, but I forgot that there's two outs, so there's that's 
you're gonna you're gonna swing at the pitch there with two outs because it doesn't matter. You're not gonna double them up. Gianni with a lead. Teddy with a lead. Teddy with a break. Goes takes that ball inside. Small. And Teddy now on second. Aaron looking at that right center gap. A lot of love in his heart. Oh, too much love, too much love. That wall was way high, my goodness. 56 mile an hour pitch, 27 well, well placed. Got him, got him going after it. And he thought, heads, 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 Eugene, Eugene. Oh, just out of the, the range of Eugene's outstretched left hand. So I guess his son still has better skills than his dad does. And the catcher doing a much better job, or not much better, but doing a job of being a leader on the team to position his infield where they should be and close that huge hole on the right side. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, a foul ball right over Ricardo's head. Ricardo is quick to move, but uh, he dropped his bat and kind of gave Aaron a look like, what I do to you, man? So Ricardo obviously in the 